Crazy. Raises his arm and gets ready to approach the ball. Well, it goes back to Mosier deep for the Effingham Flaming Hearts, and we got a flag before we ever start. And it'll be an offside on Effingham, I believe. I said Mosier, and I believe that was Hollis back there to take that. Number uh, 10, wasn't it? That will move up again. Uh, Cawthorn. We'll, oh, catch, man, yeah. Cawthorn yeah. we'll catch the defense for the Maroons here real quick. At defensive tackle, 56, a senior, Aaron Shry, nose guard, 58, a junior, Matt Wheeler. Defensive tackle, 77, a sophomore, Justin Wager. Outside linebacker, 51, a junior, Tim Lindsay. Inside linebacker, 44, senior, Brett Shry. Inside, another inside linebacker, number 20, senior Dwayne Neely. The other outside linebacker, 49, a junior, Jason Watts. Cornerback, number two, a junior, Corey Harmon. Another cornerback, number nine, a junior, B.J. Stevens. Free safety, 21, a junior, Jeremiah Whiff. And at the strong safety, number 13, senior Corey Pritchard. And we do it again. From the 45 this time, same people back deep. Nice kick. Down to about this the time, eight. That's it's Mosier gonna go now. to Mosier, yeah. Up the middle, follows the wedge. Bounces outside, he's still going. He's not, he's got a lot of green ahead of him. And Kyle Johnson is Good the tackle. only one left and Kyle gets him down at the 46 yard line. Kyle Johnson was the only man between him and Paydirt and Kyle made the tackle. He's tucked in behind all his blockers and then popped out to the left and the Maroons just didn't see him come out of there. About a 44 yard, 36 uh, yard advance on the kickoff. Took it at about the 10. Flaming Hearts will start it off at their own 47 yard line with a first and 10 on a good return by Effingham. John Hollis, the quarterback for the Effingham. They go in the uh, single wing shift to a slot left. Up the middle. A little misdirection <laughs> there, and uh, the line, the defensive line stacked him up. That's Wheeler, I believe, isn't it? Wheeler came off of there, Aaron Shry came off of there, and Brett Shry came off of there as they went to the left and... Actually lost about a yard on the play, and they move it back to the 46, where it's second and 11. Is that uh, Randolph, the ball carrier? Mm -hmm. Effingham showing a lot of things there as a uh, motion. Here they come out with a split right. Again, going wide to Randolph, who picks up only about four on the play. Gets it right back to midfield. And uh, that's uh, Donaldson, I believe, I'm sorry. the uh, ball carrier that time. They're changing uh, a little different set back there. Donaldson usually is a flanker. As usual, we're totally confused, so we'll be all right by we, the middle of the fourth a, quarter. We get a script and a sheet of positions. You look out on the field and everything's different. You know, for, for four weeks we've been saying it's early in the year, we'll get better. <laughs> now it's mid-season. <laughs> Third down <laughs> and a long eight. Again, they spread it out. This time they've got uh, Cochran in motion. Oh, oh well played. He <laughs> took the pitch back. Well played by Wheeler. And they lose about three yards on the play back to the 45. Wheeler blew his man away up, blew the center away up the middle and slanted right into the uh, to the give to the flanker and he tackled him for a four yard loss. pretty well disguised by Effingham, but it sure didn't fool Wheeler at all. Okay, going back to receive the punt for the Maroons is Kyle Johnson, number 11, and number nine, B.J. Stevens. You get the punter, Jim. Somewhere I've got it. <laughs> okay. Oh, should be uh, Mosier doing the punting. Short punt. High and short. It's going to go gonna out of go bounds. Out. out of bounds at about to see what kind of spot. 33 or so. Or 27 on, or so. Come on, there we go. 31. Okay. If you're thinking of a new sun deck, a rec room, or some new carpet, stop in and see one of our loan officer, officers today. We're an equal housing lender, the first Robinson Savings and Loan, a federal association. Remember FDIC, we've stood the test of time since 1883. There's a Maroons charge out there. Well, their far, first offensive series tonight, the Maroons uh, will start from their own 31. Ryan Bryant, a quarterback, Give up hands the middle. off. No, nowhere. Charlie Reinsmith didn't pick up a thing. Couple of key notes here. As on my sheet, they don't have it, and I'm the one that typed up the sheet. 
which is uh, number four, Brandon Lewis is back after a two week layoff as the Maroons come up quick again. Check that backfield. Uh, is that called Brian Smith and who's on the other side? Lewis. 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 Maroons in a real tight set here. Give up the Ryan middle Smith to Ryan again. Smith. Pick Probably up gets over a about couple. two or three. Watson, the uh, weak safety, got into a little chicken fight back there <laughs> that time. Kyle Johnson in here at the uh, split out to the right as Jason Watts comes out. Again, Bryant comes out to get the signal from the coaches over on the sidelines. Third down and nine to go for the Maroons. Effingham loading up the line. Bryant back to pass. Look at the wide open right down the middle. Throws oh. court, uh, tries to go to Ferguson. Overthrows a little bit. He, Joe had his man beat. Maroons did a little rolled off here to the left and brought Ferguson across the field, but Bryant just couldn't quite get to him as the Maroons are going to be lining up here for a punt at fourth and eight with 8-11 left to go here in the first quarter as both teams begin to uh, feel out what's going on. Effingham took a little page out of Robinson's book then after Robinson got their play and set everybody down and Effingham made the last switch on defense just before the ball snapped. Mike Cothran will be back deep to receive for Effingham. Corral will do the kicking. Notice the alignment of Effingham here, single back as he comes way up. He's coming clear up to the 50. Now they'll switch. Now they'll shift back. Look for him to really crash as Paris did on the... Uh, got about an eight-man rush and just barely got it away. No flag. I didn't see a fair catch, did he wave? And there's a flag right there laying oh, underneath. Oh, he was laying on it, okay. Mm -hmm. I knew there was some contact made. There's the first break of the game as that's gonna be uh, roughing the punter on Effingham as... Uh, well, he got the kick away in a hurry. I wasn't, evidently, nobody got a hand on it. The kick goes down to the 48-yard uh, line of Effingham. That's about where they started a while ago. Dwayne Correll acted real cool in there and got it off. And uh, now we're going to talk about it. Your Robinson Walmart is proud to be in Crawford County and is pleased to help sponsor the telecast of tonight's football game. Shop at your Robinson Walmart at 1304 East Main in Robinson. Watch him walk it off, Tony. X-Ray Company offers complete non-destructive testing with mobile X-Ray units for field work. Call X-Ray Company in Robinson, 618-544-2975 for your testing needs. That's X-Ray Company in Robinson. Okay, as the walk-off comes up here, I believe it will be 15. And that um, will kind of change things a little bit. And the Maroons will come out. Let's see if uh, they can get that offense in gear a little bit here as they get a second try on their first series after the penalty on the roughing the kicker. They'll take over with now a first down at their own 46-yard line. Much better field position. We put Culp in the slot. Lewis coming out wide. Lewis takes the pitch out, gets up to midfield, runs hard down to the 46-yard line. About eight yards. Good blocking out in front for the Maroons that time, and Lewis carried down to the 46, Maroons, 47. Maroons with a, went with a quick pitch and uh, come outside here as there was good blocking as uh, Lewis picks up a good, good eight yards for the Maroons, bringing up second and two. Bryant Option. keeps it. And forced outside, maybe the uh, loss of about a yard on the play. He looked back to Lewis to make the pitch out. He was well covered, decided he better keep the ball, and uh, was knocked out of bounds at the 47. About the same, about the line of scrimmage, I Nothing guess. Nothing happened there except, except uh, Brandon Lewis helped uh, Ryan Bryan a little bit as he was going out of bounds, and Brandon threw his hip into him and knocked him forward about a half a yard to keep him from really losing much as we're at third and three here. Culp in motion, Bryant carries, pitch back Lewis. He's got a little green, but a good defensive effort yes. by Effingham, and uh, that uh, loss of about a yard or two on the play that time. Boy, he snaked right through. Good, a, good adjustment there by Effingham as they came across and stopped, tried to stop that. Another quick opener to the outside for the Maroons as uh, 
after picking up eight on that first play, they lost a couple and now they're back to about fourth and four. I thought Brian handled it well. He waited the last minute and made a good pitch back to Lewis, but Effingham was, was right there waiting for him. Again, Effingham uh, standing pat to see what the Maroons do here on the uh, on the punting game. Cawthron will be the deep man for Effingham. I would say look for Effingham to just keep coming, keep coming as Little time. they run out of time. No big deal here. Fourth down and uh, back at all five yards and kick some more. The VFW Post 45-49 in Robinson is proud of their community and pleased to support the students of Crawford County in their sports activities. They are working for our veterans for a better community. That's a VFW Post 45-49 in Robinson. Stop by Rural King and see the line of Echo string trimmers and leaf blowers for fall cleanup. Several models are currently sale priced. Rural King Supply located on Route 33 east of Robinson. Maroon shift back into uh, their punt formation. Corral will do the kicking. Cawthron drops back a little farther. Good snap. Better Good kick, kick this time. Good kick. Good kick. Drives Cawthron back to about the tw or about the 18-yard line. He's oh. hit and creamed at the 26. He got hit Two once hard, spun around. He got hit hard again and spun around, and then he got finished off by Corey Pritchard. The Crawford County State Bank is ready to handle all your banking needs quickly and efficiently. Whether you stop by just to cash a check or to make a deposit, they're there to help. The Crawford County State Bank member, FDIC. Okay, Effingham coming out here in their second series with 6-13 and counting. Here in the first period as they spread with a and reverse. reverse inside. Everybody stays home. Pritchard was blocked out. Good effort by Effingham, but the gain was only about five or six yards. Pritchard had a bead on him. And Hollis, the quarterback, came over and got a good block in there on Pritchard. Good blocking out here as the uh, for Effingham as they were uh, doing kind of unusual doing they their run job. Reverse to the short side of the field where there's not a lot of room to operate anyway. Second and five. Both teams have shown a tendency here early to run to the short <laughs> side. <clears throat> Robertson, the man, spread to this side. Handoff goes to the fullback. That's uh, Randolph. Randolph. And uh, he crosses the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Picks up a first down. Good gain on the play. They mark it at about the 44. Fingham's real strong and real big, as you can see across the front. As you can tell here, as they're uh, doing a job right now on the defensive line, just have to suck it up a little bit and get a couple of good stops. As again, they overload this side. As the tight end shift. shifts to the left and brings the slot up on the on the left of the wing. Randolph the again. Randolph. Boy, he powers his way up to the 47, about three yards. Good tackle in there by Justin Wager and Brett Shry. Some fire, there's some fired up people out there. Is uh, Lots of talking going on amongst the players here with 5.17 to go in the first quarter with Effingham coming up with a second and seven on about the 47 yard line. Cawthron split to the near side. They put a man in motion. Randolph again goes to the left. No, quarterback keeps it. Had me fooled. Gets it across the 50. Hollis faked the handoff and came to the short side of the field, crossed the 50, uh, short of the first down, I think but he's close. It'll bring up third and maybe a couple. They mark it at the 47, just inside the 40, uh, just inside the 48, really. Look for Randolph to get the ball up the middle here. Well, it's the inside threat of Randolph that made that last play work. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Robertson split to the far side of the field. Randolph in motion deep. Randolph right up the middle. He's got no. the first down. And uh, that was um, Corey Pritchard who grabbed an ankle and hung on and brought him down. Enough for the first down. That takes it down to the 43-yard line in Maroon territory. Clark and Jan Pulliam and the staff at Pulliam Funeral Homes wish the Maroons the very best in their 1994 football season. Good luck, Maroons, from Pulliam Funeral Homes.
Harnikin. They bring a split with a slot here. That's Harnick in bring, motion. Uh, he got the ball. Nice and job. Good yes. defensive Wheeler. work. Wheeler again. Matt Wheeler cut in there and uh, blew away the offensive offensive guard for uh, Effingham. He's still going back to huddle wondering what's going on. <laughs> He's so doggone quick in that on the first step or so. That moves the ball back to the 48-yard line. And we've got a second and about 14 for the Flaming Hearts. Cawthron is the man split wide. Cochran in motion. And the quarterback wants to throw right up the middle, complete, got and there. good got defense. Flag out there. By Pritchard. The pass was complete back to the original line of scrimmage at about the 44. And Pritchard was right there, made the tackle. While they're sorting that out, remember that win or lose, you've got a great reason to go to Hardy's. When the competition's over and the name of the game is beating a big appetite, Hardy's has the best lineup around. With mouth-watering sandwiches like mushroom and Swiss, bacon, cheeseburgers, and fried chicken. Hardy's and Robinson. Alan Summers, your State Farm Insurance agent, is proud of their community and happy to support the Fighting Maroons. Good luck, Maroons, from Alan Summers, your State Farm Insurance agent in Robinson. What was the penalty, Jim? I don't know. I'm watching. I didn't see what it was. Um, it could be uh, third and ten or second, and evidently it's going to be second and, and uh, long yardage. They're going to walk off a big mm. one here. Nope, I say it's a big a five. one, five yards. Well, it's second, oh, and uh, I don't know. Get, get the program out. <laughs> second and about 20. Puts the ball back in Effingham territory at the 47 yard line. Well, that signal's not on the program. Robertson is a man to the near side of the field. Randolph in the backfield. Showed to reverse. Hollis has got it and again. That's Joe Ferguson. Way to go, Joe. Chased Hollis back to the 36 yard line. Big loss on the play. Now it's about third and 30. Joe Ferguson broke through and made the tackle on that play. As the Maroons, Effingham got two first downs and now they're back to where they started after the first. <laughs> a little bit of a mix up in the backfield that time. Hollis rolled out to the far side and Ferguson was right on it. Third and 30 here. As, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a draw of some kind. Back moving key early. And um, yeah, right up the middle. Uh, Brett Shry just, uh, he, he got just finished him off. He got stood up and Brett put him down in a hurry as he picks up maybe three on the play as the Maroons uh, stiffen and hold here with two minutes left to go in the first quarter. The Loyal Order of Moose, number 1369 in Robinson, is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's telecast. They support the youth of Crawford County. That's the Loyal Order of the Moose, number 1369 here in Robinson. Who's back? B.J. Stevens, Kyle Johnson. Oh, nice sure on the kick. Better kick that time. Moved him back to about the 17-yard line. Looks like a good wall set up here. B.J. can break the look at this. B.J.'s got a lot of room. Knocked out of bounds at the 44. B.J. Stevens and Randolph came over across the field to knock him out. We could see that one. That was, I mean, that formed and it was wide open. B.J. was trying to shift gears. 33, <laughs> about a 40-yard punt return. Gray's Auto Group is your local dealer for Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Clark, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge with the red carpet lease. Gray's Auto Group is proud to support the Robinson Maroons. See what the offense can do now with 125 left to go here in the first quarter. Good momentum for the Maroons now with the first and 10 in the Effingham 43. Give up the middle to Charlie Ryan Smith. Look at him go. He's down inside the 40 to the 37. Good hard running by Charlie as that open, open just the middle opened up. Yes, yes, Tony? I was trying. I was. <laughs> well, they spotted on the, on the uh, 44. Hand off to Brandon Lewis. Lewis down to the, four, or the 35. Another good pickup as the Maroons are pounding it up the middle here as we're inside a minute in the first quarter as they start to move the ball a little bit on this series, bringing up third and maybe three.
Jason Watts into the game at tight end. Maroons haven't uh, shown much other than just a tight wishbone set here this evening. Kyle Johnson spread to the far side. Keeps, backs out of the line, gets across the There's 35, down to the 30 and a flag out there. There's a hold on the Maroons. That's going to be a 15-yarder. That's too bad because Brian did a nice job of bouncing outside there after he got the initial hit. Yeah, I got enough for the first down and actually picked up about five or six yards on the play. But Has like he, you said, Tony, it's going to they're going to lose it. Be holding yeah. against the Maroons yeah. and bring up about a third and. Is it 10 or 15 yards? We've been doing this for two and a half, three years. Well, I you just <laughs> never pay attention. So. You figure it out. Because the next time you need exhaust work done, Tony, see Gray, see Gary at m, &M Exhaust and Robinson. m, &M Exhaust also does oil changes, brakes, air conditioning, and shocks. That's m, &M Exhaust at 303 West Main in Robinson. Give them a call at 546-5593. That's 546-5593. m, &M Exhaust and Robinson. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So it's, it's third and nine. Okay. Oh, they pick that up. No problem. Let's see. A little, a little. Mm. See who's coming in, going out now. Uh, Jason Watts in over a tight end. They've got Johnson and uh, who's that? Corral. And they run out of time. Is that the end of the quarter? Mm hmm And the score is nothing, nothing as we change ends of the field. Good luck, Maroons, from the Robinson IGA branch of the First National Bank of Oblong. They are pleased to help bring you this broadcast. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. And this portion of the broadcast was brought to you in part by Leaf Incorporated and the Robinson plant, where they manufacture Heath, Milk, Dud, Sixlets, and Whoppers candies. Leaf Incorporated and Robinson. Well, now you can make some points and save more money when you get your glasses from the Family Vision Clinic. The Family Vision Clinic is quick, affordable, and right here in town. The Family Vision Clinic is located across from Crawford Memorial at 1004 North Allen Street in Robinson. The Family Vision Clinic here in town. The Victor Dana Corporation supports all the county athletes in their sports activities and wish them success in tonight's game. Good luck from all the people at Victor Dana Corporation, Victor Products Division in Robinson. People finding a better way. And for the latest in multimedia products, including soundboard, CD-ROM drives, speakers, and software, see the friendly professional staff at Charlie Incorporated CI Systems on the east side of the square in Robinson, or call them at 546-5442. Big third down what's, here for the Maroons. What's that cloud floating across the field? Uh, I think some people probably heard that. I think Jerry decided that it was time to let people know that they were here. Well, a nothing, nothing first quarter has slid by. A pretty good defensive effort on both ball clubs. Neither team could get it, get things rolling. Robinson showed some signs and then got a bad break on a holding penalty, but they've still got the ball. Third and nine. They're operating from inside. Effingham territory at the 42. Third down. Bryant keeps, looks to throw. He's going to go to Kyle Johnson oh. and in and out of his Just hands. Just a hair behind him. Let's see if we don't. That was almost a late hit. Well, they give they give him a free shot, I guess. They'll bring a ball back. It'll be fourth down now. And it's not a bad position here to do a little thinking. Good kick here puts Effingham in a deep hole. Corral will be back to kick. Cawthron will be the deep man for Effingham. Effingham charges a little. Go, nice good kick. kick. Good kick. Go out of bounds. Go out of it's bounds. It's going to go out inside about the five. <laughs> where? About the five. Five yard line. About the four. Let's see where he's standing. He is. He's inside the five. We're standing right on the four. <laughs> nice kick by uh, Correll there. He, he, he knew right where he wanted it. Right As I there. said, a good kick puts Effingham in a deep hole. <laughs> X-Ray Company offers complete non-destructive testing with mobile X-Ray units for field work. Call X-Ray Company in Robinson at 618-544-2975 for your testing needs. That's X-Ray Company in Robinson. 
see if the Maroon defense can uh, pin, keep Effingham pinned back here. Mosier and Randolph in the backfield for the Hearts. Randolph, uh, no, keep to Hollis, nope. Nope, he Mosier. handed it off, but I'm not sure who did get it. Hope nobody's listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, nope. Yes, no, yes. That no, was yeah. Randolph. With it the was ball. Randolph up the middle. Good. Hollis uh, carried out the fake really good on that one. Got about five yards on the play, second and five. And it's out to about the nine yard line. This is where you need to hold them. That's Four what, downs. That's what Dwayne and I just said. But oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I was on a little trip. Whoops. Oh, somebody. Whoops. Well, we'll take five. Let's walk it off. Had the uh, back went in motion, and so, so did the left the tackle. Left, <laughs> left guard. One of the most convenient services we offer at the First Robinson Savings and Loan is our drive-up window. The next time you're in a hurry, use the drive-up. First Robinson Savings and Loan FA, member FDIC. We've stood the test of time since 1883. That's the play where the guard pulls and leads the, yes. leads the play. In. <laughs> is that the guard eligible? So guard you can eligible. run with the back or as the balls move back half the distance, bringing up second and just a little over 10 yards to go, go inside the five. Well, they fake it again, and it's uh, Rand or yeah, Randolph gets it up to the across the ten, about the eleven. Still short of the first down. Put it back down at the nine. nine where his yeah, knees I guess. Went down. So he picked up about five, bringing up third and five here for the Flaming Hearts. I picked him up on the second bounce, I think. This is a big play for the Maroons here, as the both defenses have really come out here to play in the first half, and they're shutting down each other's offenses and it would help to get a little field position here. Randolph has some room but he's, but he's stopped. stopped. A little short. He's stopped. Good tackle out there by Dwayne Neely. That was this straight off tackle. And he had momentum going but man when uh, two Maroons hit him he stopped didn't he? They brought him up short of the first half. One good thing, they're getting down low on mm -hmm. him, and uh, ho hopefully they're and they're getting trying to get a lot of help as uh, they're putting him down and making him work for all those yards. And he four. comes into the game with over 700 yards rushing in four games. Fourth and less than a yard. Flaming Hearts will have to punt it. That'll put Johnson and Stevens back to <coughs> receive at Root. around midfield. Maroon should get the ball in good field position here. Mosier snap. gets a kick away. Line drive. It's going to go to B.J. Stevens at the 47. B.J. to the Good block by Johnson. He comes the wrong he can get around. He's still running. There Back he is. To the 40, and look at he's got grass again. There's some more grass. Inside the 20, and what a run. run at the 15. B.J. Stevens. B.J. ran about 75 yards, and we're down at the... <laughs> Uh, 13 yard line. I thought he was well, in I trouble was, uh, when he kept back. About a 35 yard return and he ran 135. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, the parts keep kicking away from uh, Johnson. I'm not sure they'll do that much longer. Well, that's two big returns in a row now by B.J. Stevens. Okay, Stevens this carried is, it back to the 13 yard line where the Maroons put it first and 10. This is the opportunity the Maroons need to cash in on as they're at the 13 and need to push it in for a score. They split the backs, Culp and... Uh, Lewis. In motion. Lewis. Lewis has got it. Gets nice. some room to the 10. To inside the 10. Good job by Lewis as he picks, picked and uh, picked his way through four or five holes there and uh, or four or five tacklers and picks up about four yards inside, almost down to the nine yard line. As Watts comes in and Dwayne Carell comes out, Ferguson. Johnson split out here to the right. Ferguson in a tight end. Hand off to Ryan Smith, the fullback, but we've got a flag. I think it's going to be on the Maroons, unless the Effingham, unless Effingham lined up in the neutral zone. We'll watch and see. I... It's going to be against the Maroons. Probably be a proceed. Offsides oh, Effingham. Oh, Offsides oh, right. Effingham. Well, you called it right to start I, with, I and then gave up. All right, that'll move it five yards closer. We'll be inside the five. They set it on the four-yard line. 
With 8.38 left to go here in the first half. The Maroons second are knock, knocking, no, no second, second one. one. And on the four. Johnson split way out to the left. Watts, the tight end over here on the right, is the Maroon. Culp, Lewis, and Ryan Smith. Now we got another flag. Evidently, Effingham's got a man that's hanging over the line. He sure is. They he, call it again. It's, uh, it's uh, 78. Oh, that's the second one on him. Two or three more times that's, like this. That's uh, Juan and... Vasquez. Yeah, that'll be enough for uh, first down to make it first and goal. Vasquez, for the second time, was in the neutral zone. He didn't think so. He's lining up right across from the ball. As we're down to about the two yard line, first and goal for the Maroons. Follow the charge of the line. I think they should run right at him now because he's going to make sure he's back. So. Yeah. Yeah, he may be a little slow off the ball. Johnson split, tight set in the backfield. Ryan, yeah, oh, keep, keeper. keeper. He's Col got it. Ryan He's Ryan in for the score as he faked up the middle to Charlie Ryan Smith and uh, came off off tackle and went in for the score. Ryan Bryant with a touchdown, six nothing Robinson Maroon. What's the time? Eight seventeen of the second quarter. Tim Lindsay in now to kick the extra point as the smoke rumbles across. A cloud of smoke <laughs> and a hearty boom in the can. Maroons take the lead six to nothing here in the second quarter. A couple of breaks, they've moved the ball well. Great return by B.J. Stevens and a couple of penalties put him down on the two. What's really set all this up and, and it's kind of started back about two series ago is, is both punt returns. And then they and they couldn't get a first down and a nice punt by Correll putting him in the end, putting it on the four. Lindsay Lindsay uprights. Seven nothing to score, Robinson Maroons leader. Stop at Rule King and see our line of echo string trimmers and leaf blowers for fall cleanup. Several models are currently sale price. Rule King Supply is located on Route 33 east of Robinson. Hot eats, cool treats, the Dairy Queen's got them both on special right now. The big quarter pound foot long hot dog is now only $1.29. Try it with cheese or kraut or both for a few cents more. Also, the world famous blizzard or breeze, the 12 ounce size is only $1.19. And for those halftime treats, dilly bars are the only 40, are only 49 cents each. So hurry down to the Robinson Dairy Queen yogurt store today. Good luck to the Robinson Maroons football team from Kemper CPA Group. Teamwork gets the job done. Put Kemper CPA Group on your team to get your tax returns and financial reports done in a professional, timely manner. Mosier and Cawthron will be the deep men for Effingham as Lindsay gets ready to kick it off. The VFW Post 45-49 in Robinson is proud of their community and pleased to support the students of Crawford County in their sports activities. They're working for our veterans for a better community. As the Maroons come out to kick off, Tim Lindsay there. Well, a timely touchdown. That ought to put the spark in the Maroons. A low bouncing kick. Mosier picks it up at the 18. Comes across the field, gets it up to the 25, to the 30, to the 35 before he's finally drugged down about the 36 no, yard another line. Good good return. Return. Another good return by the uh, Hearts as they brought it across the field and cut it up the middle as the uh, Maroons just couldn't catch up with him. Problem there, no problem. Nobody missed no, a thing serious. because it, the Maroons uh, <laughs> you came out and called a timeout. You, you've, you've handed me three commercials. I haven't had time to well, do any of them. <laughs> the Loyal Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson, is proud of their community and I'm pleased to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. That's a Loyal Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson. As I started to mention, as I was so rudely interrupted, your Robinson Walmart. <laughs> is proud to be in Crawford County, and they're pleased to help sponsor tonight's telecast. Shop at your Robinson Walmart, 1304 East Main in Robinson. Well, you can read three in a row then, Jim, <laughs> if you've got all those. <laughs> what do we got, a quarter well, break? We had a timeout by the Maroons as they came out on defense, looked a little confused and called a timeout as Effingham's still over with their coach. Well, it's a good time then to mention Clark and Jan Pulliam and the staff down at Pulliam Funeral Homes. 
They wish the Maroons the very best in their 1994 football season. Good luck, Maroons, from the Pulliam Funeral Homes. And Alan Summers, your State Farm Insurance agent, is proud of their community and happy to support the Fighting Maroons. Good luck, Maroons, from Alan Summers, your State Farm Insurance agent in Robinson. Well, we're about ready to try it again. Effingham uh, with the ball. I bet covered my score sheeting. Mike Cawthorn, a wide receiver, splits way out to the right as they pitch right. With it's Cochran. He didn't, and he didn't go very far. And Brett Shry stacked up the whole pile and took it with him as he went the other direction Rand along with Dwayne Neely. Randolph, I no, think. Randolph, Rand yes. yeah. Randolph tried to split the pile and uh, Brett and Dwayne made sure that he wasn't going very far. So he picks up four on that play as they uh, took everybody in the bus to the right. Second and six. Yep. Randolph lines up the only one in the backfield, Hoenicke in motion, and quarterback keeps it. Now he throws. He got a man open for just a second, and that was, uh, well, I thought it was going to be Randolph down there, but it was Cochran that was uh, Co open. Cochran went down, and it just came straight back at the quarterback. I mean, it was kind of a funny-looking pass play, and the Maroons put, had some good pressure back there in the backfield as they Effingham's having a little little problem there. Uh, it seems as they're running some of their fakes through, they're yep. running into each other a little bit. Weger and uh, Ferguson, I believe, are the two putting on the pressure. It'll be third and six for the Flaming Hearts. Let's see, they split um, Shade way out to the near side. Oops, Ooh. There's, there's a little man in motion a little too quick, went the wrong way. That was Cochran, took a couple of steps and knew he was in trouble. The restaurant at the American Legion in Robinson is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights for dinner and Sundays for lunch. That's the American Legion, E.M. Coulter Post 69 in Robinson. It's gonna be third and 11. Morris Construction and his employees actively sponsor Robinson High School football games and wish him success during the 94 season. Good luck Maroons from Morris Construction. With 7-10 left to go here in the first half. Be doing a couple things different at the first half tonight, or at halftime tonight, we'll be showing the, the band and also doing an inter interview with the cross country coach, Tony Cork. Yeah, if he shows up. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he said he'd be up here. We want to talk a little bit about their cross country teams this week. Oh, it's complete. That ball was a high fly ball. Boy, that's, awesome. uh, nobody thought it'd ever come down, and that was Stevens on defense. I think he, I don't I think, think he knew where it was. I think he saw it. I think he just misjudged it. I think he thought it was going to carry on at, out, out of bounds, bounds and mm -hmm. it just kind of dropped straight out of the sky, and they pick up a good 15 on the play and are inside Robinson Maroon territory at about the 45 and a half uh, yard line. A big play for Effingham. I thought it was going to go out of bounds also. Right? This is the first time in uh, Maroon territory? No. Uh, that he stayed there. They got pushed back a while ago. Randolph with the ball. Look at him tackle the football. That was, uh, let's see. I got a, I missed who it was. Tim Lindsay right? made the fir first initial hit. Well, and Lindsay then, had a hold of the ball and Aaron too. Shry finished him off as he picks up, he didn't even pick up an Nothing. inch. That's about where they began yeah. the first time. Well, Lindsay had his arms wrapped around the ball and uh, making a good effort. Second down and 10. Cochran in motion. Randolph again hitting the backfield. Boy, he breaks loose and gets it down inside the 40, though. Picks gets up about, about five. five. Okay, again, another big play for the Effingham as they come up with third and a long five at the 40-yard line. When you're ready for new glasses or contact lenses, the Family Vision Clinic can take care of all your needs. The Family Vision Clinic is quick, affordable, and right here in town, just across from Crawford Memorial at 1004 North Allen Street in Robinson. Donaldson and Cochran are the flankers. Cochran in motion. Handoff goes to Cochran. Reverse. reverse. Donaldson, oh. and he's hit in the backfield. Joe For Ferguson Joe again. Joe Ferguson again. Hit at the 45. A loss of five yards on the play, and Joe knifed right through there. Joe blew through there from the outside and made the tackle. 
Well, that unfolded so nicely in front of us, and Ojo was right there to drag him down. And as Effingham goes back to punt here with fourth and nine with 5.20 left to go in the first half. Big defensive play for the Maroons that time. That, that stopped things. Back deep for the Maroons again is B.J. Stevens and see Kyle what, Johnson. See which side they kick to this time. Mosier kicks they, it deep. They still don't Stevens. think Stevens can run. Do At it. the eight. Stevens, again, a lot of running. There he goes. Him go. Up to the 35-yard line that from a, the eight. Is that a flag back there no, about the 17? No, it's just a towel. It's beanbag. just a beanbag. Mm -hmm. They've got a big guy. I don't know who it is going down the outside. And B.J. runs right straight out and does a little stutter. And... He's up the sidelines. I had him from the eight. Was I in the wrong place? Is that where they threw that down? That's about the. I uh, thought it was deeper, water, deeper I, than that. It was a clip. There was okay. a flag over here okay. too. There may have been two flags on it. Yeah, there he's picking yeah, it there's up. There's a he beanbag. The, the flags over there about yeah. the 12. But there's also a flag at the 31 too. Right. Yeah, but the uh, he received it at about the eight yard line. So we've oh, got that's a clip. Just a towel. <laughs> Okay, or so a pad the, or something. Right, the Maroons are backed up here at the 16-yard line, where they'll start with 4:55 left to go. The Robinson IGA branch of the First National Bank in Oblong is proud to be in Crawford County and pleased to help bring you this telecast. Enjoy the great hours and full-service banking at the Robinson IGA branch of the First National Bank of Oblong. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Well, the Maroons will put it in play with a first and 10. They're on their own 16. Come out in a real tight set. And Give up. Ryan Smith, Ryan, I believe. Look at here. Nope. Look at here. This Kyle is Kyle Johnson. Johnson. If he turns the corner, he's going to go. End around. Look at him go. Follow Kyle. One man's oh. got a shot at him. <laughs> Kyle lowered the boom on him. He takes it to the 30-yard line. 53-yard <laughs> run. That was it. made the tackle. That was it. That was I didn't it. see where he, where he came from. It, it was he a come, he was, round. He was, a, he was at the left end position, wide receiver, and it was an inside handoff. And when he, t I didn't, I didn't see Tra it either. Traub had the angle on him, and he made sure that he paid for it when he tried to yes, make the did. tackle. Yeah, Traub went out of bounds. Kyle didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I thought Ryan Smith I had the ball. Good, good execution with the Maroons that time. And Pass. Again, he oh, throws to Corral and he's intercepted at what? About the three yard flag line. at the line of scrimmage. Flag. It's like a you know, probably be a procedure against the Maroons. Corral, uh, they threw the pass long and uh, I don't think Corral run the pattern or there was a mix up on the play. Got a flag down, Coach. I believe it's going to be flag against on the, the other Maroons. side. Procedure. Legal procedure, procedure against the Maroons. Yeah. So I imagine the interception will stay. They've got the ball marked at the two. After that long run by Johnson, an interception as uh, Bryant and Correll couldn't make the connection. I don't know. Bryant just threw deep and Correll cut it booty. off a little yeah. bit short as uh, see if the Maroon defense can step up and really pin them back, keep a pin back here again inside the four. The Graves Auto Group is your local dealer for Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge with a red carpet lease. Graves Auto Group is proud to support the Robinson Maroons. They haven't set the yard marker yet. Got it. No, they're still up here. Now they're now they're going to move it. The, Vic, the Victor Dana play. Corp. Are you going to? Yeah, you're you're can on. Can I talk now? You're on. The Victor Dana Corporation supports all the county athletes in their sports activities and wish them success in tonight's game. Good luck from all the people at Victor Dana Corporation, Victor Products Division in Robinson, people finding a better way. You can talk as long as you have a script. <laughs> the ball is on the two. We can keep Jim from poking the ball. Okay, Stand D. back. Good time for uh, a turnover. Cawthron is split way out, but they nice, take it up the middle. Nice tackle in there by Matt Wheeler as he sliced in there to the left and, and got, and got uh, one Randolph around the ankles. Didn't even get that. That's the key to Randolph, get him early. Don't let him get up ahead of steam. He's a quick and he's big. We'll say second and nine. Ball maybe on the three. Again. Under four minutes here to go as Effingham splits guy way out to the left. The sl double slot. 
give. Up Randolph. There. Randolph got as room. he opens up. Got room. Hey, he's quick, too, for yeah. a big back. Let's see if Colt Randolph's can catch him and go BJ. Not sure. He's going to go about he's 95. Go yep. 96. Well, Randolph got through the line of scrimmage and a couple of good blocks in the uh, defensive backfield knocked the Maroons out of it and he went untouched. 96 yards. We just said you got to get him early and the Maroons couldn't get him and he turned it on and he's got some good speed as you, he's shown there as he outran B.J. Stevens yeah, and Brian Culp. I'm surprised and impressed. <laughs> he's uh, he's a 190 pound back and he ran away from those people. OK, let's see as the Effingham Flaming Hearts line up here for the extra point with 330 left to go in the first half. It's seven six. Well, they show kick. They do kick. It's good. We've got a tie ball game at 7 all. Well, win or lose, you've got a great reason to go to Hardy's when the competition's over and the name of the game is beating a big appetite. Hardy's has the best lineup around. Mouth-watering sandwiches like chicken filet, roast beef, fisherman filet, and Hardy's famous big deluxe at Hardy's and Robinson. The next time you need exhaust work done, see Gary at M&M Exhaust in Robinson. M&M Exhaust also does oil changes, brakes, air conditioning, and shocks. That's M&M Exhaust at 303 West Main in Robinson at 546-5593. That's 546-5593. Big turnaround there on that turnover by the Maroons as they were knocking on the door again, and Effingham took that turnover and went 98 yards on two plays for the score. And it's 7-7 seven, seven with 3.30 left to go here in the first half. There goes the shutout. Seven all. The Flaming Hearts will be kicking off to the Maroons. Kyle Johnson back deep. Johnson, the middleman back deep. Whip. And uh, see what the hearts do here on the kickoff, if they'll kick short or kick down deep to uh, Johnson. Culp is back also. It's They're going to go straight down the middle. Culp going is going to Culp. take it at the 14-yard line. Brian Culp, the ball carrier, takes it up to the Look 30. This. Got, Got some room, 35, 36-yard yep. line. Brian Culp. Both, both teams are doing a good job on the receiving teams today. Special teams are doing well. OK, let's see if the Maroons can uh, Start it back up here with 3.23 left to go and the ball on the 37 yard line for the Maroons. On, I'd like to see them march right down the field now with a score. Control the ball. A big play by Effingham scores, a big play by Newton scored, and that's the only two touchdowns that's been scored against the Maroons this year. And it was nothing on a sustained drive, but they were big plays that did it. Something that Effingham didn't like. They came out in a hurry and called a timeout. Well, Charlie Incorporated, CI Systems, providing the highest quality computer systems, networks, service software, and support. Serving Crawford County and surrounding areas for over 17 years. Call Charlie Incorporated, CI Systems, at 546-5442 for all your computer needs. That's Charlie Incorporated, CI Systems, on the east side of the square in Robinson. Well, timeout on the field with a little over three minutes to go here in the first half, tied up at seven all. Big series, I think, for the Maroons as they gave up that long score, and that's the, you know, there wasn't any trickery on that play. They just blew it up, blew it up to the right, and then he cut out to his left, and there was nobody there, and he just waltzed down the sidelines for the score. Well, it proved uh, what you said earlier was right. If you gotta get him, you gotta get, get him, him early, early, because once he gets through the line of scrimmage, gets his head up, is able to look around. He's uh, he's dangerous. He did that last week against Mount Zion. He had a, like a 95-yard run on the first play of the second half. Well, halftime coming up. We'll be talking to Tony Cork, talking a little bit about the cross-country teams and uh, what they've done this past week, both the girls and the boys. So we look forward to talking to Tony at halftime. Stay with us. Handoff, reverse. Corral. Corral's Left-handed deep. Kyle Johnson. Johnson 
Got it at the 36-yard line, piled down to almost the 20 and out of bounds at the 21-yard line. It's getting wild Throw out there tonight. that picture out. <laughs> Who all handled that ball? You. It was a reverse and a pass. It kind of looked like Newton, only Dwayne Correll threw it down the field and laid it right out to Johnson. And a pickup of how many, Dwayne? A lot. I'm still trying to count. <laughs> Kyle was 13, wide open. About 35-yard pass play. I saw the pass take off. Shades of Bobby Lane. Did you see that baby flutter? Yeah. Johnson circled under it, made the catch, and away he went. Looked like the uh, birds that were turned <laughs> loose earlier, didn't it? Big play for the Maroons. Ball down on the uh, 23. First and 10. R Keeper, Bryant. Cuts it out. 20, Good job. 6, 15, what, about 17-yard line. Ryan Bryant. Hole was there, and he took it. Had the option covered fairly well on that play as he picks up maybe four or five with uh, under three left to go here in the first half as the Maroons are down about the 17, 18-yard line. Hand, hand off. off to Culp. Culp. Cuts to it back Culp. up. Keeps Breaks his feet. Inside the 10, down to the 7. Brian Culp. Effingham had 12 men on the field then, but it didn't uh, get Nobody caught. counted? You the only one that saw that? And we're down at first and goal already with 2.40 left to go here as the Maroons turn it on. Ball on the eight. Johnson split. Hand off so. to Ryan Smith. Up the middle for about three inside. I believe they'll mark it inside to five. They yeah, are they inside do. the right. five. Just inside the five, and it'll be second I've got these, and goal. I've got these glasses for one reason. That's to see, so. Mine's fogging up. <laughs> <laughs> Hand off. Brady Lewis. Brandon Lewis. Touchdown. Not, did they mark it? Yes. He got they it. gave he it to him. Back. Brandon Lewis. From about the four-yard line, right? Brandon Lewis really kept churning there inside and uh, across the plane of the goal line, and they gave it to him. And I didn't. I was ready for that, and I jumped. What's the time? 2:08 here to go in the first half as the Maroons jump back on top, 13 to seven. Well, an important drive, a Boy, big you're play, not kidding. and that puts them back into the lead, and they needed that one. If there's anything wrong with it, it just didn't take enough time. That's <laughs> yeah, all. that's right. <clears throat> well, they have to wait till the smoke clears so they can see. We lost them here. Going, Going for, for two. Lindsay's not in the game. Lewis. No. Nope, no. Nope, good stop. Go. Good stop or there by Effingham. It. That was Randolph, too. He plays both sides of the ball, doesn't he? Yes. Tried to go on a quick count and score, and they didn't get it done. Well, that, that could be a big play. As the Maroons come back, 13-7 here seven. with 2.08 left to go. The Maroons need to get a good deep kickoff with good coverage and keep them down there. That was a big character builder, though. That, uh, that's going to loom big, I think, the rest of the year, regardless of what comes out in this game. Oh, who wants to say it first? Oh. Don't forget Subway. We want to thank the Subway people who looked around here tonight, and there's a huge tray of mouth-watering Subway sandwiches. Which is only half full at this yeah. point, incidentally. <laughs> I when I looked at it last, it was, it was completely full. Where'd they all go? But thanks a lot to Subway for providing some refreshment up here in the booth tonight. We've done a lot here in the last two weeks and uh, put together some things with the Booster Club as uh, the Booster Club's, let's see, menu grows down there on the oh, south end. Oh. As I don't know how many pork burgers, Polish, and hot dogs we cooked tonight. I don't know. We're going to have to start coming to the game about 4.30, Jim. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, Tim Lindsay again to kick off for the Maroons. As he puts it deep down the middle, about the 11. Cawthron, the ball carrier, he gets behind his blockers. And oh, takes oh, 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 who stuck <laughs> him? Somebody, uh, he, like, ran into a wall. Uh, Matt Wheeler. Wheeler again. They thought, well, we'll hide this little guy behind ours, and we'll hide That's ours. Right. And old Matt just blew through there and put him in the ground. As Effingham starts out from the 30-yard line with just two minutes left to go here in the first half, Jim. Corey Harmon comes into the backfield, uh, defensive back there for the Maroons. Eppingham will try to do something here with uh, we're under two minutes to go in the first half. They'd like to get back on the scoreboard here. Cawthorn split way out to the right. Look for a give up the middle again. Hoinicke, an, an inside handoff. Hand Matt Wheeler. Wheeler again. 
He's got, got to be Brett bigger Shrine. than 160 pounds. He they just have, can't be. They've tried Jason this Wines. play several yeah. times, and it's not worked yeah. yet. Justin Wager. 122 now to go. I would say if you see the Maroons do another good stop here, they will see him call a timeout and try to force Effingham to punt and not let him run out the ball. Second and 12, the ball at the 28-yard line. Jason Cochran split way out here to the left as he broke the plane, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, they, that's, let's see, Robertson is a man split out to this end of the field. Or he could have been over. against the Maroons. I think he's the one that stepped over. Watson's once, up there pretty the, tight to it on the right end. Once the center goes over the ball, you cannot break, break the plane of the... That's them. Right. And I think it was Robertson just, out here on the end. This, I think he just stepped out too far. The center's dropping over the ball, and when he hits, when his hands are on the ball, you cannot break the plane. If you break the plane, I mean, it's a penalty. Well, some costly mistakes by the uh, Effingham team here tonight. And these are just, these are errors that shouldn't happen. As the Hearts go back in their huddle with one minute left to go here as they're trying to take all the time they can is to run out the clock here in the first half with the Maroons on top 13 to 7 in a hard hitting game. Second and 16. Shift back to the to the right. Randolph. This time not much. Three, four yards maybe. Pick up, bringing up third in about 12 with 33 seconds left to go. Well, maybe and the Maroons might uh, take a time out there, but they chose not to. I think they're going to let it run out, and I'm not sure Effingham won't try to get one more play in here. They're going to have to hustle 20 seconds. Shade splits to the far side. Hoenicke on this side. Split the backfield. Randolph, the ball carrier, right side. He's got some room. That was about the now same the play he scored on a while ago. And there's the half, Jim. 13-7, the score here at halftime. Robinson Maroons lead. As we get set here, we'll see the Robinson Maroon band come out on the field. And... Taking a quick look at the uh, scoring for the second quarter, and that uh, all the scoring occurred in the second quarter, incidentally. First quarter was a zip, zip tie at the 8 17 in the second quarter. Bryant carried it in from two yards out after a big uh, punt return by Stevens, a 35 yard punt return. Lindsay's kick was good, made it 7 0. At 3 30, uh, Randolph ran up the middle for Effingham for 96 yards after they had intercepted the ball on their own four. Uh, following another big 50-yard play by Kyle Stevens uh, or Kyle Maybe. Johnson on, on that end of round. So it's been big play after big play. Mosier's kick was good, made it 7-7. Seven to seven. Uh, Maroons took the ball and uh, immediately came right back down, and Lewis carried it in four yards out. Uh, Culp tried the two-point conversion. It was uh, no good, and so it's a halftime score, 13-7. to seven. Maroons on top. Well, the Robinson High School band will be on the field here in a little bit. We're waiting uh, to be joined with the cross-country coach, Tony Clark, who will be up here and visit with us in a little bit. The cross-country teams this past week, the Robinson High School boys, defeated Alney, Newton, and Effingham on Tuesday. And uh, they're 8-0 so far this season. And some of the top finishers for the Maroons, now this is cross-country boys, uh, Chad Veenstra, Dusty Childress, uh, Pat Cork, Darren Mikeworth, and Marty Obst. And the girls have done well also in cross country. They defeated Newton and Effingham, and they've upped their record to 6 and 1. The top finishers uh, for the girls Jennifer Trailer, Julie Malone, Kelly Matthews, Kim Boatman, and Megan Shry. And then the Maroons travel to Cumberland for the Cumberland Invitational. Tony's here, and we'll get a headset on him. As the Robinson High School band comes out on the field, we'll watch some halftime activities. And Tony Clark, welcome to the booth up here. And uh, I've just did a little background on this past week in cross country, and I'd like you to give us some details, uh, the boys and the girls both, on what they've done this week. Okay, well, we've uh, been uh, real successful and so forth uh, so far this year. The uh, This past week, we ran a uh, quadrangular meet against Newton, 
all in Effingham, and our boys uh, won against all three of them and did a real good job, and the girls only didn't have a full team, but we defeated the other two teams, and then we ran the Cumberland Invitational on Thursday, and uh, the kids just did a great job. We, the boys won the meet, and uh, we placed four of our boys in the, uh, in the top eight, and our number five runner was 12th in a field of over 60 runners, so that's a, a very fine job. And our girls finished second to a very strong Tuscola team. So we've uh, we've been working real hard and everything, and uh, really pointing to the you know to the end of the season uh, for our regional, sectional, and hopefully state competition. And um, so our dual records and those things are, are important. But uh, that end of the year is what you, you know you're really training to try and run your best there towards the end. So you're building up, and uh, you've got a goal set and uh, the end of the year when the regionals come up where are they this year we are hosting our regional be right here in Robinson. right That'd right give here us an in opportunity Robinson. for the people to come out and take a little uh, find out what it's all about yes we'd love to have some people and again uh, you know you might not think that uh, helps that much but uh, every friendly person there cheering for you really helps the boys run a three mile race and the girls run a two mile race and uh, that'll be Saturday. I think it's October the 22nd. It's the day of our uh, Jerseyville game. Oh, okay. So we run at uh, 10 that morning, and uh, 10 and 10:45. And uh, so folks can come out and watch that, and then get a go, go home, have dinner, and come back and watch the football game. Maybe spend the day so, out here, do watch cross country, and right. And, uh, we uh, doesn't take us long to get done. We <laughs> got about a 18 minute race for the boys, or faster, and then the uh, the girls in a two mile will, will be right in the oh the top ones will be at least 13, maybe in the 12s, and then 13, 14 minutes. You might uh, we'll try to explain a little something about cross country. I know there's a lot of people out here have heard about it, but they're not really familiar with when you talk cross country, you're literally running cross country. How do you set out a course and are they standardized throughout the uh, league or the conference, so to speak, or the state even? Basically, the state just says that for boys, they want a course uh, around three miles uh, and so on, give or take, you know, a little bit. And the girls run uh, anywhere from two to even up to maybe a little, you know, a 2.1 uh, course. You, you set it up the best you can. Uh, every, uh, the neat thing about cross country is uh, every, every course is different uh, and so on. Some places are like one mile loops or something and, and others are kind of like an out and back course. And, uh, you and have some to go up have so woods. many hills or anything? There's nothing standard. <laughs> it's just whatever the folks at that area make. We've, uh, we run at Cowden Herrick every now and then and, and you have to literally go up this one hill on your hands and knees. Uh, and so <laughs> that's on. Really cross that's really Yeah, and the boys, it's about a two, at the two and a half mile mark. And so there's some tired guys crawling up the hill there. How do you lay it out here? Uh, you start in front of the bleachers, and then do you finish up here where people can see if they come out? I think, uh, well, when I set up the course, one, I wanted to have a challenging course, but again, I wanted to have a course where uh, the fans could see as much as possible, uh, and I'm a fan too as a coach, so you, those courses are nice, like over at Newton where you run in the, in the woods over there, but you see them head in the woods, and you don't know where, then you see them come <laughs> out of the woods. But uh, we start on the track here, the boys course, they do basically two laps on the track, and then we really run the tree line around by the middle school, practice football field, back to the middle school, around the track at the end and finish. And the girls start over there by the middle school at our one mile mark, and they really run the last two miles of the boys course. And uh, basically the fans can see about, uh, if you move around a little, you can see basically 90% of the race. And they finish right here in front of yes, the Yes, both of them finish right it. at the finish line of the track and, uh, and everything. So, you know, those people that can't move around that much can sit there in the stands and see the start and the finish. You've had uh, over the years, Tony, quite a, a reputation built up in the state of Illinois in track. You've, got, you've won a lot of honors. Uh, you certainly have the respect of, of uh, all the coaches throughout the state. In your program over the years, how have you seen it grow and how have you seen it change? Has there been more interest? Well, cross country, uh, this is my 12th year uh, and so on. And uh, the very first year I had two boys coming back from the previous team. When, when Jim Fox left, he had five really good seniors and so on. They had six seniors on the team and uh, there were no girls, no girls had ever even run at that stage. So really we started, you know, kind of uh, with kids who hadn't had that much experience. Uh, We've, uh, I think our program has grown uh, number wise. Again, we, we fluctuate a little bit, but basically between the boys and girls together, we've stayed in the 20 to 24 range. And this year we have 26. We have 16, oh, that's, that's 16 boys and uh, 10 girls and so on. And uh, 
I'm real proud of them. They've, uh, they're just special kind of kids that want to go out and do that. There's not a lot of a notoriety and people come to watch you practice or anything. You've got to want to do it. And uh, then you've got to have a little bit of gumption. You, you push yourself in those races as hard as you want to, whether, no matter where you're running position-wise. And so every kid can, you know, really feel like he accomplished something regardless of where you place. How do you train in the off season? Do you uh, do you, you try to get them to do so much in terms of running or, or uh, weights, exercises? This good question. I of course we try and encourage the kids to run track. Uh, you know we're track in the spring and then cross country in the fall, and then the the summer running is real important. Not that they run hard or races or anything, but just that you keep in condition. And uh, it's only in the last three years that we've really had a number of the kids take us at heart on that. And uh, and it's we call them fun runs, and that is. We meet at 8 o'clock on uh, Monday through Friday, and this last year we had a total of 25 kids, counting a few of our middle schoolers, at one time or another show up, and we ran between those kids 447 days when you add them up, which is about 21 days a kid. And we had two boys miss only two days. And uh, it's fun. They run where they want. They get in groups and go. We just meet together and uh, run around town. Yeah, I've we seen run you. everywhere. And I think a lot of folks have seen you're, us. You're always last. And, uh, uh, well, I want to see where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's great. You build a great program out here, and I, I hope uh, people come out on uh, that Saturday that you're here, that Jerseyville football game day, 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. Uh, see the cross country, get a little exposure to it, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. This, this is a sport that um, uh, I think all the colleges have uh, cross country Quite sports for most of right. them. Here's an opportunity for some of these kids. They give some scholarships in that area. Right. We've had two boys, by the way, get scholarships, the la and that's not our main See. Indiana State program. Yeah, Chad uh, Rice is a Chad sophomore Rice. at Indiana State. Chad Rice, I saw his State. name the other day, right. And uh, he's in their top ten now, and they're a Division One tough, that's right. tough, tough thing. School. And Keith Jarrett uh, last year got a scholarship to Danville Junior College, which in the last few years has been in the top five in the nation junior college. He's running number two runner for them right now. Uh, really, a, a, our best meet to, for people to really see a lot of kids is this next Thursday, September the 29th. We're going to host our Invitational here, and we have 17 teams signed up. Uh, our boys' race is at 4.30. Uh, start right here, and, and with that one, as many as we have, we actually start them on the football field. So they run down the field, hit the track, and uh, then we got a girls' race, a boys' open race, a girls' open race. So we'll probably have, I think, anywhere from 300 to 400 runners. <laughs> And then we're going to have some middle school kids running uh, about the time the boys' open starts in there. What's an open race? Uh, we let all kids run. In a big meet like that, you get seven kids to really run on a quite your varsity team. But uh, all the coaches want all their kids to run. So you almost everywhere in an invitational, it's not just the top kids. You run them, and then you have an open race, which are all the kids not in the top seven. So if you have 40 kids on the team, the other you know 30 or whatever get a run. Um, and that's, you know, that's what it's all about. Tony, I appreciate you coming up here at halftime and talking to us about your uh, cross-country team and your year so far. And, and let's make a deal right now on uh, Saturday, the Jerseyville day. Um, the races will have been run, so let's, let's talk sometime at halftime or uh, somewhere on that ball game that day, and we'll talk about the race that day. We'll well, that'd results. be super. I, I hope I'll be real happy. Our goal is to win both the boys and girls in that regional and uh, move on to our sectional competition, which will be at Benton. So that'll be our first step on that journey that day. So uh, I'll be here, and I, I'm planning on being happy. I hope, okay, I, I, well, hope I am. Well, we'll look forward to talking to you and uh, finding out the results of it, because you're going to be successful. i got a lot of confidence in you. Halftime here, the Robinson High School marching band on the field. You've been watching. Uh, the score of the Robinson Maroons, and i got to look at the scoreboard and be sure. I keep forgetting that extra point situation. It's 13-7. to 7, Robinson Maroons on top here at halftime. We'll be back with the second half action in just a little bit.
13-7 the score here as the teams are back out on the field at halftime. Crawford Memorial Hospital announces the association of Dr. William Tejas, ear, nose, and throat physician. Dr. Tejas is board certified in otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. For any sports injuries or general consultations, please call Crawford Memorial at 544-3131 and ask for Mary Young at extension 2290. With the right contractor, you can even improve an Anderson window, introducing the Anderson Home Improvement System. In the hands of someone with the right experience, Anderson Permashield Narrow Line windows convert into Anderson Tilt Wash windows in as little as 15 minutes. Permashield Gliding Patio Doors quickly become French-style doors, and Anderson Permashield Casement windows upgrade to high-performance glass right before your eyes. The system includes plenty of accessories as well, that can enhance your Anderson products. To find out more, just give us a call at Big Buck Building Center at 544-2138. Your authorized Anderson Window Center. The Anderson Window truckload sale is now in progress at Big Buck Building Center in Robinson. Stop in and save on those Anderson windows. Now is a great time to buy a new home or refinance your old home with a real estate loan from First Robinson Savings and Loan. We're an equal housing lender. Since 1883, we've stood the test of time at the First Robinson Savings and Loan, F.A. I'm looking well, for the birds. The birds? I think they've gone away. The, <laughs> the rain came for a while. What are they doing out there? They meet again, and the Maroons will receive the second half kickoff since they deferred and kicked in the first half. And real tight ball game all the way through. Both defenses playing superb. A couple of breakdowns here and there, and that's why the score is 13 to 7. I think the Maroons need to get and execute just a little cleaner some of their offensive plays and establish some things as they've done some things on a couple of trick plays and open, opened up for big gainers that have brought them down so they could score. So see what happens. Well, the Flaming Hearts will kick off to the Maroons as we start the second half. Kyle Johnson, B.J. Stevens, Jeremy Whip, and uh, Jeremiah Whip. Jeremiah, sorry. And Charlie and Charlie, Reinsmith. Yeah, I couldn't find, I kept looking at that four. I couldn't tell if it was four something or a four zero. Big second half here with the Maroons on top. 13 to seven, and here we go. Pop up, Whip Jeremiah. going to take a ride on the 20. Bobbles it and picks it back up and gets maybe to the 25. <clears throat> Not a good way to start, but let's see if the offense can click here and put a drive together and put a couple of scores or a score on the board. Your Robinson Walmart is proud to be in Crawford County and is pleased to help sponsor the telecast of tonight's football game. Shop at your Robinson Walmart at 1304 East Main in Robinson. <clears throat> Lewis and Culp, and uh, let's see. Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith will be in the backfield as they start off. Culp and Lewis and uh, double wing bank almost. Ryan up the middle Smith, to right Ryan Smith. Middle. He gets six or seven, boy. And he's, he's still, still trying. Keeps them legs churning. <clears throat> Pretty much a slow whistle, I think, there, right there. <laughs> I said six or seven, give him about three or four. Uh, I had him back at the 20 instead of the 25. Robinson's no huddle offense. They tighten up the formation this time in the wishbone. They've got uh, Corral split out to this side. Got the wide end or the tight end over here on the right with the in the wishbone set. Ryan Smith give up the middle here. to Ryan Smith up. again. Not maybe, much there. Maybe one. <clears throat> As the Effingham defense still playing tough there up the middle as the Maroons can't seem to bust through as it brings up about third and I would say six yards to go here for the Maroons. Big play because they're deep in their own territory. Culp and Ryan Smith in the backfield now. Johnson and uh, Corral split out to this side. Bryant back to throw. Rolls out. Keeps it. Throws downfield deep, deep, deep. Corral, and uh, Corral plays better defense that time. There's no flag there. No, that was no, good play. That was good play. Uh, Corral had to come back, and uh, he had a shot at the ball, but uh, really more defense than offense as he went against 
Good coverage there by Effingham. Let's see, that was um, Mosier, wasn't it? Number 42 that was back to defend Corral that time. Bryant got kind of in no man's land there as he was rolling out to the right and let it loose deep, which was the right thing to do, and almost came up with a catch for Corral, but kind of got on the wrong foot. He needed to needed to let it go a step quicker, I think. Well, it's fourth down. Robinson will be kicking. Corral back in pump formation. <clears throat> Good kick. Kind of a low line drive. It's going to bounce across the 40, and it's picked up at the 40. Return back to the 45 yard line. Good return by, I believe that's Hollis. Isn't it? No, Cawthorn picks up about five as he broke through the first two tacklers and then was put away by the Maroons with 10.02 left to go here in the third quarter. The VFW post 45, 49 in Robinson, proud of their community and pleased to support the students of Crawford County in their sports activities. They are working for our veterans for a better community. As Effingham comes out here, split right, wing left, the wing man goes in motion, give up the middle. Not much there right. as Nothing most of the, the maroon interior was there on the tackle, led by Wheeler, Wager, Shry, Shry. Lindsay and Randolph got up off the bottom. Stop by Rural King and see our line of Echo string trimmers and lathe blowers for fall cleanup. Several models are currently sale priced. Rural King Supply is located on Route 33 east of Robinson. This is Robertson splitting out to the near side of the field. They've got a man in motion. back to pass. Oh, Hollis. Lofts one out here and it's incomplete. Well, he had Donaldson yeah. open, but uh, overthrew him just a little bit. Kind of turned him around a bit. As that brings up, that brings up third and nine for the Effingham Flaming Hearts. As they tried to catch the Maroons there and throw a little short pass out here. Okay. We switched headsets, I guess, so, okay, whatever. We're okay. <laughs> Split way out here to the left as another reverse inside. Look at Justin Wager. And a face mask. And I bet he got him. <clears throat> that's too bad. Randolph just barely, or that's Donaldson, that just barely got yeah. the handoff. I don't think I'm on, huh? Mm-hmm. Tough break because Wager had him and he just he got him high and and uh, the hand slipped up there on the face mask as looks like Effingham will be real close to the first down here. X-ray company offers a complete non-destructive testing with mobile X-ray units for field work. Call X-ray company in Robinson 618-544-2975 for your testing needs. That's X-ray company in Robinson. First down, I believe, for Effingham on that penalty as the Maroons had it covered and just uh, got a tough break there. As with nine minutes left to go here in the third quarter, Effingham gets a first down. Yeah, that's not a good, not a good break there. The ball down on the 43 yard line in Robinson territory, Effingham now with a first and 10. Come on, Dee, step up. After a big defensive play, Flag. there's Randolph again, and he gets six or seven yards. Probably a procedure penalty against Effingham on that, they the way the flag it. went up. I don't know who this officiating crew is, but they've done a good job tonight. <clears throat> sure is. That's be a five-yard penalty against Effingham. And that's a break then for the Maroons. That'll put them back with a first and 15, and they'll try it again. Clark and Jan Pulliam and the staff at Pulliam Funeral Homes wish the Maroons the very best in their 1994 football season. Good luck, Maroons, from Pulliam Funeral Homes. And the next time you need exhaust work done, see Gary at m, m Exhaust in Robinson. m, &M Exhaust also does oil changes, brakes, air conditioning, and shocks. That's m, m Exhaust, 303 West Main in Robinson, 546-5593. Give up to Randolph. Randolph. 
He's met by the Shries. He got about five, though, back close to the original line of scrimmage. Shry had two blockers on him, and, uh, <laughs> and he shook them on both the ball. off and made the tackle. Mm -hmm. Alan Summers, your State Farm insurance agent, is proud of their community and happy to support the Fighting Maroons. Good luck, Maroons, from Alan Summers, your State Farm insurance agent in Robinson. Second and about 12 here for the Hearts as they tried to run Randolph up the middle, and he was met by Brett Shry. Shry and Justin Weger um, with an assist on that tackle. Robertson again, the man split to this side. That's who he's throwing for. And oh, oh there it is! Intercepted. BJ Stevens. Stevens. He may go all the way. Oh, he, no doubt. 60 yards. Got him bark. A big interception by BJ. He watched that one come in all the way, gathered it in, and nothing but green. BJ's been a uh, big star tonight as he uh, with those two long kickoffs, and then he stepped in front of the receiver and ripped up the sidelines for a nice run and a score as the Maroons open up a 19-7 lead. Well, the quarterback put that ball in the air a long time. When that happens, somebody's going to get that, it. Sometimes that, it's the wrong guy. Kind of go back to that play in the second quarter where he threw that rainbow up right. there, mm -hmm. and B.J. was ready for this one, and I mean, he sat there and sat there, and then he did exactly what he needed to do. That's his third interception of the season, I think. First one that he's run back for a touchdown. Lindsay will attempt the extra point. Low snap. Oh, they fake it, it up. Yeah, I think it was a fake all the way. Oh, throw back. Uh, Where's and, the pit? Uh, well, Jason Bryant, uh, <laughs> threw it, and he had Joe Ferguson. Joe fell Ferguson down on the got. Play. Well, I thought Joe Ferguson got knocked down, well, but they, no flag. And I think we'll that come, end zone's a little slick. We had a shower at halftime. I was told. They're coming up the field, leading by 12. It's 7:35 left to go here in the third quarter, with the Maroons on top, 19 to seven. That helps that 13-7 score, that six-point spread, because that one can come back and haunt you. The Loy Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson, is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast and supports the youth of Crawford County. That's a Loy Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson. Crawford County State Bank is ready to handle all your banking needs. If you need some financial advice regarding loans or trust accounts, they're there to help. The Crawford County State Bank is an equal housing lender and a member FDIC. And win or lose, you've got a great reason to go to Hardy's. When the competition's over and the name of the game is beating a big appetite, Hardy's has the best lineup around. Mouth-watering sandwiches like mushroom and Swiss, bacon, cheeseburgers, and fried chicken. Hardy's and Robinson. Are you getting the same noise that I did in the first half? No, I, I think we did get our headset switched. The wheeler's been over there pulling and turning <laughs> dials. and I, I don't know how we did that either. I guess we'll have to put our names on each one of them every night. Graves, oh, just a number. Just a number. Mine's 13. Okay, Tim Lindsay, after that big play by the Robinson defense, and B.J. Stevens gets... Tim Lindsay gets ready to kick off here. Down the middle as it bounces a couple of times. A little reverse. reverse. Randolph, Hollis with it, and he's cornered back there. Gets around a couple of tacklers and brings it up to the 25. Good coverage by the Maroons as they were watching for that, and uh, they stayed in their lanes. That and Cawthron. Cawthron, yeah, yes. Cawthron did a good job getting out of the hole back there, though. Gray's Auto Group is your local Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealer with the red carpet lease. Gray's Auto Group is proud to support the Robinson Maroons. First and 10 at the 25 for the Flaming Hearts. 7.22 to go here in the third quarter. 19-7, the Maroons lead it. It's kind of nice to be here after a month of being on the road. Uh, this is my first trip here it's this year. Too bad. Hand up, Randolph. up a minute, Randolph. Nowhere. Look for Matt Wheeler to get off the bottom of that pile. He sliced in there to the left and uh, picked him off right at the ankles. And they got to continue to do that because, as we saw earlier, yes. you let him get two or three steps. We're... Okay, he's gone. Don't know what that reaction was. I don't was. either. <laughs> well, they give some scores that we don't know about. Something happened down there. Randolph, the only running back. Hollis, Comes a reverse Randolph. this way. Look at Jason Watts. Good Got job. 
Watt stayed and, home and headed him back in. And, you know, here, I, was, I was watching Matt Wheeler that time, and they triple teamed him. <laughs> Jason Watt stayed at home, which is what he's supposed to do out there. And then uh, Aaron Try slid down the line from his defensive tackle position, made the tackle as Jason turned to the reverse back into the inside as it brings up third and seven here for the Hearts. The three-yard gain is all on the play. Shade is a man split to the near side. Donaldson and uh, or Hoinicke, that's back to Randolph. They're going to send him outside. Yeah. Wheeler just missed. And Good uh, tackle. Tackle. Pritchard. Corey Pritchard. I tell you, Randolph was going to straight arm him and go around him. He, you could just read his mind almost, and Pritchard didn't allow it at all. Good stop. Drug him right down. As he picks up maybe four on the play, bringing up fourth and three and putting them in a punt situation here with uh, Stevens and Kyle Johnson going back to take the punt. Have well, they ran him wide tonight at all, Randolph? Most of the time it's just maybe once, yeah, off. maybe once. Their tendency is to run him up the middle. He. Um, this is a play that Maroons need to stay home and be observant because anything could happen. Stevens and Johnson back deep for the punt. Mosier kicks it high, oh. short to Johnson. He's going to Johnson let it go at the 25. Oh, right yeah. it. Look Five. at this alley right, right here. Up the lane. <laughs> Takes it to the 37, eight yard line. Coach Riker was waving him <laughs> off and saying, let it sit. And Kyle looked at him and yeah, says, hey, there's an alley get, up here. Get I'll away, get it. away, get away. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he picked it up and brought it back, what, eight yards? Oh, about yeah. almost 10. Yeah. As, the, as the Maroons start out here at the 39 yard line looking for a uh, Another good drive and a score with 4.50 to go in the third quarter. Again, Johnson splits way out to the left. Lewis Culp and Ryan Smith in the backfield. And the reverse all reverse again. and the referees in the way. Johnson brings it across the 40. Gets about three or four yards on the play. Good tackle. Yeah, almost a late hit in there. Good tackle out here, or a good uh, block out here by and I'm not even sure who it was. It was Lockhart, I think. Was it 72. Lockhart? 72. Made a good tackle as uh, Johnson. That Effingham was looking five. for that, and they uh, stayed at home real well and, and held Johnson to about five yards. As Coach Roach pulls just about everything he's got in the playbook out tonight. Second and about six. Bryant to throw quick. Oops. Gets his arm hit, and it falls incomplete. Thank heavens. Good coverage out there yeah. with, uh, mm. is it Caw Cawthorn on Kyle Johnson as they were going to go deep to Kyle. Down well, good the luck. Go ahead. I was just going to wish the Maroons good luck from the Robinson IGA branch, the First National Bank of Oblong. They're pleased to help bring you this telecast. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Back to action here. Not long between plays with the Maroons. Look at this. Oh, oh. get the block, get the block. Oh. Gets it across the 45 out to about the 48. He's going to be a little short of the first down. Maroons pulled, uh, looked like the, pulled the tackle and the guard on that and led Culp up the, the short side of the field with uh, about fourth and one and a half. As the Maroons look like they're going to punt here. Mm-hmm. Effingham doesn't quite believe it. I don't know. Oh, they've, play, they've played it really straight all night long. Unusual defensive set for a punt. Oh, it's, somebody blew it, uh -oh. and it's fumbled. And Cover, recovered Effingham. Effingham. Yeah. The Maroons are trying to Bad center snap. the ball back to the, cent, or back to the punter with the quarterback still over the center, which they've been doing that all night since after the first one in. It hit Ryan Bryant's leg as uh, well, Effingham takes over here on the 43. Yeah, they're in great field position here with a first down at, at the uh, Maroon 43-yard line. This portion of the broadcast was brought to you in part by Leaf Incorporated in the Robinson plant, where they manufacture Heath, Milk Duds, Cichlids, and Whopper Candies. That's Leaf Incorporated in Robinson. Well, that's a play that uh, they tried with a two-touchdown lead. I don't think we'd have tried it with only one. Well, I don't think it was. I mean, that's what they've been doing with mm -hmm. the quarterback over and hiking through it or centering back through his leg to uh, corral the punter. Got a, what are we looking at here? A conversation on the field with the officials. 
Waiting for the clock to run down? Or I'm what? not sure what no, it is. Clock stopped. I believe the clock needs to be reset as Coach Taylor's up here shouting some mm -hmm. orders to uh, someone as the referees are waiting for something. There, they reset it to okay, 305. It was 345, I think, wasn't it? Then uh, set it back to 305. Now we're set to go. Let's get those mar maroon defense defensive people here and get a, another good stop on these drives as there's 3.05 left to go here in the third quarter with the Maroons still on top, 19-7. to seven. Donaldson and Randolph in the backfield for Effingham. They put the man in motion and it's Randolph naturally and he doesn't get much. Yard, maybe. Nice tackle in there by Justin Wager and... Pat number Wheeler's. 85, Joe Ferguson. And Wheeler's the last man up. <laughs> Well, there's no need to go out of town to get your glasses. At the Family Vision Clinic, the latest design in both glasses and contact lenses are available. The Family Vision Clinic in Robinson can do it all. If you just give them a day or two, across from Crawford Memorial at 1004 North Allen Street in Robinson, the Family Vision Clinic here in Robinson. Second and 10 for the Effingham Flaming Arts. Robertson again split out to the near side. Showing a pass. Hollis being chased, tried to screen, almost threw it into the hands. Wager of, has uh, been. I want to say something about sophomore uh, Justin Wager, who's really done a good job tonight. Yes. We've been calling his number a lot. As uh, I think there's a lot of double teaming going on there, and on Matt Wheeler and even Aaron Shry, and uh, they've forgotten about Justin, and he's been in the backfield quite a bit tonight. As it brings up third and ten here, Jim. Wheeler almost had an opportunity for an interception that time. They threw the ball right through his hands there and he didn't know it was coming. Third and 10 and 43. Let's see. Donaldson and Randolph. Donaldson in motion. Uh, hand off inside. inside. Got a little running room. That's uh, the other guy, whoever that is. <laughs> It's not Randolph. There Number it is. Mosier. Mosier. Yeah. <laughs> the other guy. Well, why not? I mean, with Eppingham, it's Randolph and the other guy. Mostly Randolph. Mostly Randolph. He he's quite a ball player. There's Four. not a team around here that would turn him down, is it? See what the Hearts do here on fourth down, as they've got about four yards to go. As they go back in punt formation, I'm not. I don't I'm, think I, I believe it yet. I don't either. Randolph back there. That I don't. Randolph I, doesn't kick. Mosier does the punt. Short, Short snap. snap inside. Didn't get it. Stopped him right there, right across the 35-yard line. Good job by the Maroons. Nets on the bottom is number 77, Justin Weiger, and three or four others. And that was well defensed by Robinson. I think they just did, didn't they? No. Nope. No. Nope. A good, good stand. Good stop after that uh, misplay on the punt as the Maroons hold and only allow Effingham about nine yards, and you always need ten. I'd have come near believing it if they'd lined Mosier up back there instead yeah. of Randolph. I, that one, when he went back there, I thought there was no way. Maroon split uh, Correll and Johnson way out to the left. Bring Lewis, Lewis in, in motion. motion. Give up the middle to Culp. Culp got some room across the 40, close to the 45 yards. Picks up on. almost. Nice piece of running right there. Mm -hmm. Picks up almost, almost 10 on 10. the carry. He's close to first down. He, he may have it. They're going to they're going to want to measure that. He's that close. The Victor Dana Corporation <laughs> supports all the county athletes in their sports activities and wish them success in tonight's game. Good luck from all the people at Victor Dana Corporation, Victor Products Division in Robinson. People finding a better way. Ron, here's your chance to really zero in on that ball. It's right on our side of the field. <laughs> we'll know before anybody if he's got that first down. Let's see if the close-up works on that camera. How's it look? Uh, well, we know the official's got big feet. Looks to me like we've got it. All right. It gave Jim time to pour his coffee <laughs> with 52 seconds left here to go in the third quarter. <laughs> Is it hot? Mm, it's good. It's kind of almost football weather tonight. 
Tight set, wishbone for the Maroons. Play coming in from the sideline for Ryan Bryant. Corral split left, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Hand off Lewis. Kind of a counter play mm -hmm. to Lewis, and uh, all of Effingham was waiting there as he came across and only picked up maybe about the length of a football. Yeah, was yeah, about the other side got. of the yard line, that's it. <laughs> Brings up a second in a long, long, long nine. Johnson split to this side. They show a little different set. Split the backs. Oh, look Culp and Lewis with Ryan Smith right behind the quarterback. This is an interesting defensive formation by the uh, Effingham Flaming Hearts. Yeah, nobody deep. I know what I would do. Throw. That's exactly deep. what I would do. Uh, overthrows him a little bit. That's good call, Tony. <laughs> good call. As we end the third quarter, the Maroons with the score on the long interception by B.J. Stevens are head 19 to seven as we roll into that fourth quarter. Is it time for a new computer, monitor, printer, or an upgrade for your local area network? If so, let Charlie Incorporated, CI Systems, help find what is right for you. They've been providing major brand computers and printers as well as computer service and support for over 17 years. Located on the east side of the square in Robinson or call 546-5442. That's Charlie Incorporated, CI Systems. Did you notice all those spots, how they've kind of got <laughs> wrinkled and things like that? I mean, I think that was when the rain hit at Paris last week. <laughs> Ah, it's good to be home. Yeah, but you run. realize what we're what yeah. we got the next couple of weeks. Yes, I do. We'll have the polls at Marshall, and then we'll be back home, and then we'll go back on the road to Charleston. Are we, are we back home a week and then go back to Charleston? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah, or did we play Char No, we the yeah, we play week. Mount we play Mount Zion here. That's right. And then we go to Charleston, and then we play Jerseyville here. We're uh, we're in the Fort Towers at Charleston. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that big clipboard at home. Yeah, sure. it, it, I almost got of, airborne last time. We <laughs> kind of like a helicopter. It's, it's like a wing. Okay, <laughs> third down now for the Maroons in a long nine as we start out here in the fourth quarter. Maroons with the ball, first or third and about nine. Brian on the keeper. Got if he gets, He's got if it. If he gets a block from Brett, Aaron at try. The 50, good tackle just across the 50 yard line. Mosier come up and made the play. Mosier made a good play there as Aaron came out to block him, and Aaron did a pretty good job, just couldn't quite clean him off as Bryant went on a bootleg off to the left. A couple things, and I've noticed this from the first half, is Mike Manhart's out on the bench. I think he twisted his ankle as he's out now, and uh, Aaron Shry is playing in his position at the guard. I think Aaron kind of got caught in no man's land there. He wasn't yeah. sure whether he was going to throw the ball or not, and he was afraid to get too far downfield. This time the Maroons shift Bryant back. Nice from center to Correll who gets off a quick kick. High, Cawthron at the 21 or two, 21 yard line. Okay, time to put the, that defense back on there as uh, with 11-10 to go. X-ray company offers complete non-destructive testing with mobile X-ray units for field work. Call X-Ray Company in Robinson, 618-544-2975 for your testing needs. That's X-Ray Company in Robinson. If your car didn't start this morning or if it left you stuck on the highway, we have the perfect mechanical solution. We make auto loans. Since 1883, we stood the test of time at the first Robinson Savings and Loan FA. That was your car going bad. You didn't get my... I never mind. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, it's just, just me. It's just me, Ron. Give up the middle. Good stop. Joe Ferguson. <laughs> Joe Ferguson and, and, and Justin Wager have been there all evening long. Hot treats, cool, hot eats, cool treats. The Dairy Queen's got both on special now. The big quarter pound foot long hot dog is now only $1.29. Try it with cheese or kraut for a few cents more. Also, the world famous Blizzard or Breeze, 12 ounce size is only $1.29. 19 and for those halftime treats dilly bars are only 49 cents each so hurry into your robinson dairy queen yogurt store today robertson the man split to the near side <laughs> had a young man from Effingham who just found some more subway sandwiches he brought outside up. Trying... there's randall oh, oh who was that Get you got number. him that's stevens no, no. 58 uh, matt wheeler <laughs> 
just got a handful of ankle and tripped him up and he didn't get Randolph looked like he was going to turn the corner and Wheeler just slid on down the line yeah, fought I, off his fought off his blocker and uh, took him on I'd already given him a big gain on that one Wheeler was on the ground when he reached out and grabbed him third down and nine here for the hearts with 9.55 left to go. Shade the wide man. B.J. Stevens out here all by and himself. And he throws to Shade. He just lofts it out. B.J. on defense and uh-oh. Oh, oh that's, man. That's going to be offense. That's got to be offense. Let's see if they talk it over. B.J. had the that's, ball all that the that way. It should be offense. It should be. And uh, Shade ran right into B. his B. back side. B.J. comes up there limping a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's got to be there. It's there. It is. Yes. It is. B. We B. had a good shot of that. <laughs> and that, that was a good call. Because if he wouldn't have bumped B.J., it would have been another interception. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he had to run right up his back. See the Maroons decline this one and bring up fourth down and nine with 9.46 left to go here in the fourth quarter. The VFW Post 45-49 in Robinson is proud of their community and is pleased to support the students of Crawford County and their sports activities. They're working for our veterans for a better community. Well, stop by Rural King and see our line of Echo string trimmers and leaf blowers for fall cleanup. Several models are currently sale priced. Rural King Supply located on Route 33 east of Robinson. Well, they walk off the penalty. That's going to give them a third down again. Why would they not go for the fourth? It was 15 yards, and that's going to move it, and a loss of down. It's a loss of down. There was another penalty, too. Wasn't well, there? there was two penalties on I that. I didn't see like, it. Because what's, I don't know what that is, but he rolled it over. It's fourth down. So evidently, whatever it was, was a loss of down also. We're confused. I'm confused. Who's back to punt? If it's Randolph, look out. It is Randolph. Hey, he doesn't kick bad, either. Corral at the 48. Nice Carell block. To the 40. Come on, Correll. Correll out of bounds at about the 33. 33. Corey, Pr line. Corey Pritchard made an excellent block back up here to give uh, Dwayne Correll a little running room. And now, this is where you go down and you put it in the end zone. You got to. 9.35 to go in the ball game. It's 19-7 the score, and Maroons need one. Your Robinson Walmart is proud to be in Crawford County and is pleased to help sponsor the telecast of tonight's football game. Shop at your Robinson Walmart at 1304 East Main in Robinson. Okay. See if that big offensive line can open some holes up and let's put it in the end zone here. Reggie Tripp split to the far side for the Maroons. And handoff, handoff. goes to Culp. Who Cuts picks back his inside. way? A couple of yards. Pick up maybe close to four. Almost four, Jim. Okay. I was looking at uh, Jace Woodworth. Got up a little slow that time. Jace has been in on a lot of plays tonight. He's worked hard. Oh, and you're 6'6 six, six and 266. <laughs> takes you, a while to get up. Takes you a while to get. <laughs> Second and about six for the Maroons. Culp, Lewis, and Brian, uh, Brian Smith in the backfield. <laughs> I had a little ahead of myself. Reggie Truett split to the far side. Bryant keeps there. it. Bryant pitches back to Lewis and his fumble ball, and look out. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. The ball is picked up and brought back to the 40-yard line maroon territory. What you didn't want to do is turn the ball over. and. Yeah. Defense has just got to suck it up again here as they as Effingham picked up that uh, errant toss on the option with uh, and bring it down to the 41 yard line with 842 as they try to climb back in here down 19 to 7. Defense has just got to come up with a big stop here. And that's about a 20 yard return after that punt or Clark, after that fumble. Clark and Jan Pulliam, the staff at Pulliam Funeral Homes, wish the Maroons the very best in their 1994 football season. Good luck, Maroons, from their Pulliam Funeral Homes. A little different set. Stevens back Hollis in there. To oh. Randolph. <laughs> he got Wheeler him. got him first. Wheeler got him in the backfield, and Wager got him at the line, and then Shry finished him off. And he didn't go anywhere. Don't even move the yard marker. Second down and 10. Except for one play, the Maroons have done a job on defense on Toby Randolph. 
You take that 95 yards away, he doesn't have much. He, he's almost even. <laughs> <laughs> Negative. The Loyal Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson, is proud of their community and pleased to sponsor uh, to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. That's the Loyal Order Moose, number 1369 in Robinson. Good luck to the Robinson Maroon football team from Kemper CPA Group. Teamwork gets the job done. Put Kemper CPA Group on your team to get your tax returns and financial reports done in a professional, timely manner. The Kemper CPA Group. See what the, uh, looks like they're going to throw. Incomplete, wasn't even close. That looked like that was going to be some sort of hit yeah. play as, uh, he went to Robertson, but, uh, as uh, Jason funny. Cochran came flying out of the backfield behind the play. Which brings up a third down and 10 again for the Hearts. <clears throat> With just under eight minutes left to go here. The Hearts come out here with a sp split right, the slot over on the left and the wing on the, on the right. With the guy in motion, hand Inside off. Inside again, reverse. they double reverse. Double reverse. Double reverse. Too. Justin Jim. Weger is on the bottom. Let's see if he got it. There was two red, true red jerseys nope, down there. He fell on it. Um, again, Effingham's having a hard time yeah, they are. on those yeah. exchanges. There's a lot of... Cochran I mean, uh, was the one that finally came up with it for Effingham. Didn't look like they were on the same page there because... Uh, they got the first handoff okay, but the double reverse part of it, they ran the headlong into Well, each look other. for anything here out of the hearts as they've got to get a first down here with under seven and a half minutes left to play. Fourth and 12. Man in motion. Back to throw is Hollis. He throws deep, way deep, too deep. Good enough. Maroons take over on downs. Stevens was watching the ball more that time than he was the uh, the receiver. His receiver, yeah. He knew it was coming up Rewinding. short, too. The next time you need exhaust work done, see Gary at M&M Exhaust in Robinson. M&M Exhaust also does oil changes, brakes, air conditioning, and shocks. That's M&M Exhaust at 303 West Main in Robinson at 546-5593. That's 546-5593. Alan Summers, your state farm insurance agent, is proud of the community and happy to support the Fighting Maroons. Good luck, Maroons, from Alan Summers, your state farm insurance agent in Robinson. Big hand for the defense there as they come off the field from this huge Robinson crowd. Handoff up the middle to Lewis. Brandon Lewis, Lewis, who picks his way, look, and goes down about 13 <laughs> yards. Crosses uh, to about the 43 or four yard line. He just tucked in behind Brian Lockhart and just took 13 yards and uh, first down. First down at the, about the 43 and a half yard line. I thought uh, Ryan Smith had the ball. <laughs> I had that problem the first quarter. I was calling it. <laughs> Tight set with Johnson split to the far side. Brian. This time, Ryan, Ryan Smith's Smith. got it. Two or three. The restaurant at the American Legion in Robinson is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights for dinner and Sundays for lunch. That's the American Legion, E.M. Coulter Post 69 in Robinson. Morris Construction and their employees actively sponsor Robinson High School football games and wish them success in the 94th season. Good luck, Maroons, from Morris Construction. Brian hands to, hands to Lewis, Lewis, and he's caught this time. Gets a yard out of it, though. Maybe two, making it Third and six for the Maroons at about the 40-yard line. Third and seven, yeah, let's he, make it. Uh, he got hit and then stretched out for a couple. That's good work. Big play here for the Maroon offense as they try to hang on to the ball with 6.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. They just tighten everything up. Now Take, there goes Johnson to Johnson split out. Johnson splits out, and Watts. Watts comes in here on the le at the left end position. Culp, Lewis, and Ryan Smith in the backfield. Ryan Bryan, a quarterback. Third and seven. Pitch back Pitch to Lewis, back. or Culp. Come on, Culp, turn the corner. the corner. Way to turn Got it. the first down. Look at him break through. Down inside the 25, 22 yard line. Good blocking out there, but off as Culp set up his uh, blockers great and read right off of him and ducked in behind him or went, went the way that he the opposite way that they took their men and he did a great job and a good job out there on the outside by the Maroons. Just short of 20 yards on that pickup. That's what we need. They place it at the 23 where it's first and 10. As the Maroons continue their drive here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Smith. Back. 
Not I much. Lost him. Nope. <laughs> I believe he was tackled at the line of scrimmage. I kept waiting for him to give it a call that time. I was watching. <laughs> Give a little credit here. The Effingham defense is really to playing tough. Yeah, they've done a good job. It's been a good defensive ball game. Just as good as the uh, Newton game is, there's just been a lot less turnovers by the Maroons, and they're just well, it's just been a good, solid, hard-hitting game. The Maroons have played a good ball game both ways. Give a lot of credit to those special teams, especially the punt return and the kickoff returns. Option. Pitch back, Culp takes the corner, doesn't go anywhere. Good job out there by the defensive back who came crashing up as he saw the option develop, and it'll come up with third and ten for the Maroons here with under 450 left to go in the fourth quarter, and they're still on top, 19 to 7, Jim. Big well, play like here score, by the offense. Yeah. I'd like to see some more points right here. Don't suppose he'd throw one. Looks like Corral split to the far side. Up the, he's, he's back to throw. He uncorks it. I hope it gets out of bounds because there's nobody red there. It does. He uh, unloaded it and got away with it. That was a good play yeah. by, by Ryan Bryan. He didn't take the sack, and he let it loose and got it out of bounds. Nothing you can do on those no. is just get rid of them. Look throw for the, away. I'd say look for the Maroons to go for it here. With They're inside the 25. They have really nothing to lose or gain by punting, so... Putting two tight ends in the ball game. You got Joe Ferguson and uh, Jason Watts coming in. Brett Shry's in also. He's in at uh, guard. Maroons are going to call timeout. Now they're going to talk about it. Well, good. When it comes to glasses, you can score a touchdown at the Family Vision Clinic in Robinson. The latest design in both glasses and contact lenses are available. The Family Vision Clinic in Robinson can do it all if you'll just give them a day or two across from Crawford Memorial at 1004 North Allen Street in Robinson. Robinson IGA branch of the First National Bank of Oblong is proud to be in Crawford County and pleased to help bring you this telecast. Enjoy the great hours in full service banking. The Robinson IGA branch of the First National Bank of Oblong. <laughs> Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Win or lose, you've got a great reason to go to Hardy's when the competition's over and the name of the game is beating a big appetite. Hardy's has the best lineup around with mouth-watering sandwiches like Chicken filet, roast beef, fisherman's filet, and Hardy's famous Big Deluxe at Hardy's in Robinson. Well, well so the teams come back out on the field. We'll let Jim drink some more coffee. To, uh, I like these timeouts. Gives you a little time to pour. 19-7 the score. Four or what? 25 to go here in a ball game. Maroons, Maroons with a fourth down. Uh, we're lining up for a field goal, Jim. Who's going to kick it? This would be a 40-yard attempt by... Uh, by who? They haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> they still haven't done it. Is that Lindsay? That's Tim Lindsay out there to kick the extra... By or, gosh, they're going to try it. And it's going to come gonna up be short. a little short. That's all right. It's okay. We go 10 more yards, and he splits the uprights on that. So you, need to practice you, learn, you learn a few things like that. That's about what they needed to do there. Tim just popped it up a little bit. He had to line drive that one so far out. So with 419 left to go here in the fourth quarter, and the Maroons still on top, 19 to 7. Graves Auto Group is your local dealer for Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge with a red carpet lease. Graves Auto Group is proud to support the Robinson Maroons. The Victor Dana Corporation supports all the county athletes in their sports activities and wish them success in tonight's game. Good luck from all the people at Victor Dana Corporation, Victor Products Division in Robinson. People <clears throat> finding a better way. All right, and time for another big stop as the Maroons took a couple, three minutes off the clock there on that short drive, yeah, but they need to, that's to just what they need to do. Hollis as it comes out flag. on the end around, yeah, a flag already. That's a uh, no, big, big gainer. Donaldson. Uh, Look for a procedure call again against Effingham. Taking and walking and back. He picked up about 13 yards as, on the play. As Donaldson came from the flanker position on a, on a handoff. And it is a procedure call. Well, they'll walk it back, and uh, we'll, that'll put the ball back to about the 15-yard line, and we'll do it again. Effingham's had a lot of procedure they calls have. and had, have had a few pro costly ones. Costly. Right. They've also had a few problems in the backfield uh, with some uh, 
tough exchanges. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at this uh, commercial. Just let me know when you're going to do that, Ron, and I'll get out of the way. <laughs> Just shove me right into Jim. <laughs> I was getting ready to read this Charlie, Charlie Incorporated commercial, and he blew it. Yeah, I'll be careful there. Okay, it brings up first and 15 for the Hearts. He keeps, keeps the bootlegger. It. He's got some room, but he's <laughs> not much. Gets uh, probably six, seven yards on the play, but he started from the 15. He's back up to about the 22-yard line. Hollis on the keeper. That uh, takes some time off the clock. That's the best thing. As the Effingham Flaming Heart flag comes across around the field. It's second and eight. You better watch and you might get shot by the cannon. <laughs> Uh-oh, the Maroons are waving theirs in retaliation. Those things get pumped up a little bit here with 3.30 left to go. Second and about eight. This time it comes this way. Uh, Donaldson again. There's He's a, got some room. There's a hold oh, out yeah. there. 42-yard line is where they bring him down. Enough for a first down, but I think it's all for naught. I also think 42 did the holding on that one, don't you, Dwayne? Yes. He looks like who, me? Somebody had to stop him. He <laughs> sure did. Yeah. Handful of jersey. We'll say that there's been a lot of penalties on both sides, but uh, there hasn't been, you know, it's not been one way or the other. It seems to be being called a good clean game. I mean, it's been a good hard hitting game for the uh, the Maroons and the Hearts. But it's which, been played clean, yeah. though, and there's <laughs> nothing late or anything yeah. uh, it's good. we've seen. It's been a good ball game. You know, after the last two years, where two years ago, Effingham came down here and got thumped by the Maroons and then vice versa last year as the Maroons took that number one ranking and went up to Effingham and just and left it there and <laughs> left it there. Well, this year, it, I mean, they're ranked number one again and they're fighting like heck to keep it through this Effingham game as we've got 320 left to go here in a second and about, oh, 16, 17 yards to go as the defense needs to rise to the occasion. Now this game, unless they completely self-destruct, ought to be pretty well. Another handoff hand outside, off. Matt Wheeler in the backfield. Sure glad he transferred here. Well, that's, that's uh, quite an acquisition right there. Yeah. Quite an addition to the ball club. And another flag on the play. I believe it's going to be against. Maybe in the Maroons this time where it's at. Mm, I don't think so, I the way they're acting, though. I think it's against Steffingham. The Maroons are deciding. Maybe not. Clip. Against the Maroons? Hmm. Hmm. Strange call. Not a, now that gives them a break. They had them way back deep, uh, the ball at the 14 yard line, and this very well will give them a first down. And it's going to bring it up to probably around it'll be the third. It'll be close. I'm not sure they'll have a first down. It'll probably be second and maybe, oh, two on the play. No, you're right, Tony. Not sure where that came from, but uh, I'm sure that mm. as you watch the film again, you'll see it. But it must have we been didn't see the receiver or something away from the ball. Must have been on a linebacker <laughs> or a cornerback who came across the field. And mm -hmm. Third down and two. Um, is that yard? Is the down marker right? I'm not right sure it's second third. Down. I think it should be yeah. second. I think. I think that's what the uh, side judge is saying. Yeah. Yeah. But he rolled it over. Yeah, now we're back, to, back two. to two. Okay. Second and two. Ball at the 28-yard line. And we are under three minutes, Jim, Come here on in the clock. fourth quarter. Come on, clock. Up the middle. Randolph, not much. Maybe a uh, pickup of maybe three as he picks up the first down at about the 31-yard line as they move the sticks. I think Effingham is uh, showing some frustration right now in the fact they haven't been able to get that offense moving. You can tell the way they get up. They've lost a lot of the fire that, that they've shown throughout the ballgame. 
Maroon's just got to make them keep working hard for these last few yards, and they'll go away with the victory here tonight. First and ten. Quarterback, Mass. bootleg, going to throw it down short. Oh, almost, oh. where to go? Almost intercepted a couple of times. Jeremiah Wiff saw it and just went right through his hands as uh, he almost picked it off, and we'd had another score. BJ about got a hold of it. Wayne, can you see as I'm twisted around? Sometimes. <laughs> Just knock Ron out of the way. The camera's not that important anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, it'd probably be better if I just hang, hung from the outside, so. You're not gonna say anything, Kincaid? No, I'm comfortable. <laughs> yeah, you've been leaning against that wall all I'm evening. Leaning. I got my seat. <laughs> Second and 10 here for the Hearts with uh, 228 left to go. As a split receiver wide left, bring it back in motion. motion. Up the middle. Flag. They had two guys in motion. And they also had procedure. So that's got to be against Matt Patrick Wheeler Miller. again on the tackle. Okay, my turn. Okay. If you're looking for prompt friendly service for your networks, computers, printers, and other computer equipment, call Charlie Incorporated CI Systems. Their professional service staff can help you find the problem and fix it without any hassle. Just give them a call at 546-5442 or stop in on the east side of the square in Robinson. Charlie Incorporated CI Systems. You notice how Tony shuts up and never yeah. he, yeah. he never yeah. makes a bit of noise when yeah. we do that commercial. Just like he's not even here. I wondered with his daughter going to college now who's writing the copy. <laughs> I have spell checker. <laughs> he calls her every night. <laughs> oh, she whiz. She's home this weekend. That's what I thought. That was a little late. <laughs> I know. Third down and eleven. Two 10 and counting, Jim. Maroons need to get the ball back. Quick pass, slant inside. Enough for the first down. And that was uh, Jacob Shade on the reception. He's been over there a lot tonight. I think that's his first catch, though. That's, think, a, that's, a, think... that's a good play by the Maroons. They give him 10, 15 yeah. yards. They don't, they, what they want to do is keep him from getting behind him. They ran a slant. One fit, under two minutes to go. I think that's the type of patterns that Effingham they, they need run to over run. because that's, yeah. well, that's uh, the Maroons are giving him 10 to 15 yards. That's the type of early. pass that he can throw uh, effectively. I think he's not strong enough to throw outside much. Randolph again and Wheeler. He and Wheeler and Wager. And, uh, Wager. It's been quite a tandem tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, we said the key before the start of the game was. Uh, Aaron or Brett Try, a lot of times they haven't gotten to Brett Try because that interior line has really played a ball game. Hollis back to throw. Far side. There. He's cornered, hit, knocked down. BJ Stevens and uh, uh, Whip Jeremiah and Whips over there and Dwayne Neely. Neely. Neely was the second man in on that. And Weger even got over there. <laughs> What's he doing over there? He can't run that fast. <laughs> Brings up third and four here for the Hearts with. Uh, 105 left to go, Jim. Come on, clock. As the Maroon look, Maroons look like they're going to retain their number one ranking and have made a great big step towards that Apollo Conference Championship. There's still a long way to go. But Hollis they, heaves it deep, way out of sight of everybody. I said that, and they they about got their hands on it. He <laughs> sure arches that ball, don't he? Throws it high enough for people to run under it, I, I guess. guess. Well, it's a fourth down. Shade is six. Fourth Shade. and uh, what, about four Well, it is, if they get the spot right, there we go. Fourth and four now, fourth and five. As a heart still try to punch it in here with 49 seconds left to go. Shade again, he throws to him, slant inside, he drops this time him. incomplete. Guys, there's the ball game. Yep. Yeah. With 45 seconds left to go here, the Maroons will take over on downs. And what can you say, but the defense came to force again with some good defensive plays. The offense did their job, made, kept the turnovers down, moved the ball, got a couple of touchdowns in there, and uh, the Maroons are going to walk away with a 19 to hard-fought seven win over the Effingham Flaming Arts. 
not counting our chickens before it's finished, but I feel a little safer now than I did three or four minutes ago, you know, when they had the ball. The fat lady's warming up. <laughs> Have you drank all, are you finished with your coffee? Did you no, I got some more. I thought maybe you timed that I was out, ready for so. an overtime ball game. Brian in there at quarterback, I'll just go down yeah. on one, which he does. Let the clock run. That Effingham should got do it. They may spot it and may have to have another one yet. Effingham's not going to call a timeout. I don't know if they have any, do they? They may have two left. After that it's little. Sort of, you know, why? What's the use at this uh, point? They're going to have to go one more, I believe. That'll be it. What a game to come home to after being gone three weeks on the road. The Maroons are going to come out victorious here as the clock counts down. And I just saw the cannon being lit. Yeah, and here uh, the guys <laughs> out on the field shaking hands. Here's a hard fought ball game, a big win for the Robinson Maroons. And here's some sportsmanship out there right now, too, on a ball game like this, an important ball game for both teams. Effingham's a good ball club, and they played a whale of a game against a good Robinson Maroon team and the Maroons are starting to develop and show a few things <clears throat> offense still needs to get clicking a little bit better but that defense you get two or three scores and yeah, well, they're they, going to be hard they're going to be hard to catch they got a couple boys back tonight who'd been out for the last two or three weeks and uh, Lewis and Harmon they both played through the game without any further injury so uh, just expect better things to come lost lost one of the starting guards uh, Mike Manhart they're pretty well through the second half. I, I think he he came off and then went back in in the second quarter, and then he was out the whole second half as Aaron Tri filled in. So just got to get a few things healthy and uh, reacted to some negative things that have happened last week to the Maroons, and they're uh, on their way. Next week we'll be in Marshall looking at the poles every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> behind the big ones over there. <laughs> well, this was a big ball game to win for Robinson. This was almost a must. Uh, not only from a uh, conference standpoint, but for their number one ranking and also just to bolster the confidence for the season. Because uh, it was a big change last year when Robinson uh, lost over at Effingham. Um, it might have been a good loss for him in one respect. I think it, uh, it made him a little tougher. But this game tonight, if they, had they lost this, I think this would have taken the heart out of a lot of things because they, they look forward to this game. Effingham is a good, tough ball club, and really, this was probably their first test this year. Sure was. Offensively and defensively both. And really, and I'll just recap the scoring here from Dwayne in the second half, there was only one, one touchdown and one score, and it was a big one when B.J. Stevens stepped in front of a pass and took it 60 yards on an interception, and that made it to final score as the PAT was unsuccessful, making it 19 to seven. That had come right after uh, Robinson being called on a 15 yard penalty and, and uh, Effingham had taken the first down situation inside Robinson territory and things were not looking real good at that point, but uh, Stevens sure topped that off. Well, defensively, you can, you can name the whole defensive ball club, I, but Stevens had an outstanding game. Wheeler had an outstanding game. Wager had an outstanding game. And you can just go right down the line. They all and did. These guys just did a great job. Yeah. One of the statistics uh, that I had noticed earlier in uh, tackles from this ball club, what you don't see is an outstanding number. I'll take aside from Matt Wheeler, who's had uh, something like um, uh, 40 um, or, or uh, 14 solo tackles with 40 assists. But you go down that line, and you see assists like Dwayne Neely coming into tonight's ball game with 46 assists. Aaron Shry, 41 assists. Um, Dwayne, or let's see, I said Neely, didn't I? I was looking for Brett. Where'd Brett go? He was up there. Well, he's anyway, up, Brett's also up there. And, yeah, and, 35 and to 40 assists. A lot of and you tackles, see, too. Uh, the whole line with 30 and 40 assists uh, midway through the season, you've got a heck of a ball club. Well, I mean, next week we're going after the Marshall Lions, who played Oblong this evening. It'll be interesting to see how that game turns out. They Marshall came in undefeated against Oblong and have ba really blown away their opponents. And uh, they're, you know, they're going to be a force to reckon with with Duzan and their whole crew. Well, they beat uh, they beat Paris pretty handily opening uh, night, didn't they? Uh, no, 12-7. to 12-7? to seven. I was thinking it was a bigger score than no. that, but that's, that's the only comparative score that you can, uh, that you can draw. 
Well, again, uh, next week we'll be at Marshall. Um, Non-conference ball game, but Marshall Robinson game always is a big crowd and always a tough ball game. Once again, those. Uh...